One, two, three, four. Good evening, everyone. Today we have the great pleasure to be here with Mr. Rob Dimmers, the president of the International Fiction Film Jury of the 23rd Olympia Film Festival. Welcome, Mr. Dimmers. It's a pleasure for me to be with you too. Thank you. Well, to begin with, uh, this is not the first time you take part in our festival, is it? Uh, it is not the first time that I'm invited to Pyrgos? No, it's the second time. That's fine. And what do you think about Olympia Festival? Well, it is so sympathetic, so warm uh, a festival that uh, um, immediately after the first time uh, that I've been there, I wanted to return to Pyrgos. But Time is going and life is passing, and but here I am today. And we hope not in Pyrgos, but with. <laughs> I hope one day you will manage to come in Pyrgos for once more. Yes, I hope so. So, um, what is your opinion about the online festivals uh, being held in this difficult period? And what do you miss the most uh, about live festivals, from live festivals? Well, what I mean is to meeting with people and to be able to exchange and uh, we don't have to uh, uh, take care of uh, techniques or uh, timing. We just meet people and discuss all together, especially for the, for the jury, I would say, to be able to meet after each film and exchange about our impression. Uh, it is so different than having, let's say, two meetings after everybody has seen all the films. Uh, it is surprising, though, how work we can manage. But um, as a human being, it's... Uh, it's much more rewarding to be uh, to do it uh, live. I prefer live action to animation. <laughs> <laughs> and do you believe the coronavirus pandemic uh, will considerably harm the movie industry? What will be uh, the consequences in the cinema domain? Well, I am very, very much afraid that. Um, it might be towards the end of looking at films in cinema houses. Um, I have spoken with a few friends and since nine months, we look at films through our small screen. Though it is very different, we have like lost the habits of going outside, going in a big room with two, three hundred people to look at the film. And uh, in the meantime, film production has stopped. Uh, so the films that are available now are the one that were ready to go on screen before the pandemic, but couldn't go uh, up to now, at least here in North America. And uh, the, there will be deep effect. But uh, I'm sure is that a great, great number of films are still being made and will keep being made in all over the world. So we will just need to have a different access to, uh, to the film probably. And again, this being said, I hope that in... Uh, three months, five months, I will have the pleasure to go back to the theater 
and hopefully uh, there will be many people there, but I'm not sure. Well, I think that we all miss this uh, this feeling to go to the cinema or go to a theater. So we hope that there are going to be many people again. Um, yes, I hope that. You have a great experience of over 50 years in the movie industry. Many things have changed during that time. Although, is there something that has remained the same uh, all over these years in, in cinema? You are absolutely right saying that many things have changed. Um, at least, if I can, I can speak here about Canada, the um, the domination of American film have grown and the people that take the decision here, which film will be made, um, let's say are much more influenced by money than by the real quality of the film. Uh, that's the two main components, uh, I would say. But as I said uh, right before, in the meantime, um, I can hear every day by some news magazine that I'm receiving that uh, very good films are made in uh, in Africa, in every country, in Asia, in Europe. Uh, so it seems to me that the quantity of worldwide film is uh, more important now than it was 15 years ago. But at the same time, uh, it's more difficult to uh, have the opportunity to see those films. So that's why festivals are so, so important. Without uh, your festival, I would certainly not need to see the 15 feature films uh, I have seen. And just before I start screening the film for the Olympia, um, I was on the jury of a Southeast Asia Film Festival. And then I saw 35 films made in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Nepal, in India, in Bangladesh. So that was, thanks to a festival, such an opportunity once more to see films that for me are much, much more important than most of the American films made nowadays. I agree. <laughs> Your film activity is mainly oriented towards children. Why do you prefer producing films for young age people? One day, when I was 50 years old, I was a Saturday morning, seated in my home and uh, looked through a newspaper while thinking of different things. My attention was drawn by a number of no shock, but that news that I told myself, I know that life is very difficult, but at the same time, it is so worthwhile. And while Thinking of that, I start uh, developing the concept of films for children. I wanted all the films that I would uh, select be contemporary films rooted in our reality. Uh, some very realistic, some more imaginative in terms of uh, uh, traveling uh, in the space, but but no science fiction film, no historical film. I would also, I also decided that the first film, the main actor would be a girl, the second film a boy, the third film a girl, the fourth film a boy, etc. cetera. Um, I wanted in each film the nature to be very present because what, I think we miss a lot today is our contact with nature, with the wind, with the sun, with the rivers, with the mountains. So in each story, the nature will play an important role. 
also um, I didn't want the uh, the pacing of the film uh, managed by the rivality between good and evil. I didn't want the dramatic tension based on uh, what is good and what is bad, because I fortunately had the opportunity to travel a lot around the world, and I never met somebody who is 100% good and somebody who is 100% bad. So I wanted something different to build the dramatic tension of the film. For me, that was very important. Um, I also wanted uh, good humor, though we would deal with very realistic and uh, tough uh, uh, moments. At the same time, I wanted to be laughing uh, during the telling of the story because uh, I think that we kids are much better prepared to do later on as an adult and um, be in front of difficult moments if in their youth they had the opportunity to laugh a lot. So there was uh, elements like that that I wanted to be uh, part of the film I would be producing. Also, I am a French Canadian, so I wanted my first film be shot in French. I am a Canadian. I wanted my second film to be shot in English. I am a citizen of the world. I wanted my third film to be shot in other country and other language. And I went like that with the film <clears throat> shot in French, shot in English, shot in Poland, in, uh, in England, in Finland, in Argentina, in China, so in different parts of the world. And I also wanted that in front of the camera, in each film, there are people coming from different origin, different country, and also behind the camera, the technician be also people from different cultural background. And when I finished to put my concept in writing, I wanted to let people around me know that I had developed such a content and asking them if they had story a subject to present to me. To my big surprise, in three months, I had about 60 projects submitted. I read all of them and kept five that were exactly along the lines I was looking for. And of the five, I picked up one, uh, which I titled The Doves of the War, to, to be the first one. And depending on the success of the first one, uh, I would decide if I will go to the second one. But knowing that it takes about three years to develop a project from the start of writing the script up to the moment it is on the screen, I didn't want to wait the result of the first film before starting to develop a second film. So I started to develop the five films all together and saying to myself and people around me, if the first one works, we'll go immediately to the second one. Fortunately, the first one was a big, big success theatrically in Canada, theatrically in the States and sold uh, within a year in about uh, 125 countries. And when that year was finished, the second one, the peanut butter solution was already ready to go. And my ambition when I started that whole project was to produce nine films. And when people ask me why nine, I said, because it's probably impossible, but I'm choosing a, a, a magic number, which is nine, to put the good odds on my side. 
but it went so well that from nine, I pushed my objective to 12 and to 15. And nowadays there is 26 fiction feature films produced along the lines I have this just described to you. It is really interesting indeed. In conclusion, I would like you to give us a positive message for all the young people uh, who take their first steps into the magic world of cinema. Uh, be stubborn, very, very stubborn because it's very difficult. And, uh, but if you don't abandon, you will succeed to make your first film and then your second and then your third. So be courageous and stubborn. And on another uh, way, uh, look at people walking on the streets and look at people and try to imagine who they are, where they come from, what they are aiming at. And also go to a museum and look at paintings and read because all that is so important, so enriching when you uh, start writing a script and reflecting on the world we are in. Very nice. So thank you very much, Mr. Rock. If uh, you don't have, uh, if you don't have to add something else, um, we can end. This. Just best of luck to you, and best of luck to the festival. And Thank hopefully, you we wish you all hopefully the, the pandemic will be over and I could join you in person next year. We really hope it. Very best. Bye. Δεν θα το κάνεις καν μοντάζ, το ξέρεις. Ναι.